This is for Adila, man, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to make some dreamy, airy, next level type beat. I'm trying to picture clouds, angels everywhere. I'm trying to bring some creativity to this beat. Before I move on to the next sample, I'm actually gonna cut this sample in half. I want more of that wah-wah effect. I'm gonna add some sort of echo and delay onto this. Now that we have our samples, we're going to take the same samples and reverse them. These are our chops. These are our chops reversed. We're going to slow down our chops. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our mixer, we're going to add some reverb. I want a lot of reverb delay on our chops, it's going to make it sound more airy, more dreamy, more ambiance. And the way I'm going to use these chops is that I'm going to hit my chops and I'm going to let them flow into the next chop. The reverb is going to carry this chop into the next chop where no chops are going to be played. So the way I did the reverb for my chops were a large hall and I made sure my time was at 70. You see if we play with this timing it's not going to carry very well into our next chop. 99 is a little too much where it doesn't stop. So 70 is the perfect sweet spot in order for our reverb to carry our chops well into the next sample chop. Because our reverb carries on for a little bit, we're going to go into our stereo and we're going to pan our samples. So when we play these samples and they overlap each other, they're not going to interfere with each other because the reverb is going to be panned. Now our samples sound really airy, really dreamy, and that's what I want to picture you listening to this beat is Jay Dilla on a cloud. Now that I have my samples set, I got to make sure the drums are knocking. <laughs> So we got the samples planned out and you know we got to have some knocking drums laid down. We got to get that swing, we got to get that groove, we got to get that feel. And then we can layer our samples on top of our drums. So we layered those two drums together. The kicks I sampled in stereo and then from there I stereo separated my two kicks into two separate mono channels. I then took those two kicks and layered them on top of each other with one filtered out. I am going to be coming out with a tutorial covering this section on how to do your drums like this in a future video. So just hang tight, stay tuned. I'm gonna get y'all drums knocking. When you do your drums for this type of beat, you definitely do not want to be on beat, but you don't want to be too offbeat either. You want everything to come together in a harmonious swing and the hi-hat is gonna carry your beat. So the snares are gonna hit before they typically would hit and so are the kicks but the hi-hats for the most part are going to be on point with one or two of them that'll throw the swing off but we'll still keep the swing in line and that's why i use metronome and double time because it's going to keep me on beat and i'm going to be able to create my own natural swing Put the hi-hat in 16 levels, make sure it's on velocity. Now that we got the drums knocking, we're gonna lay that sample down.
Find our bass sample. We're going to put on no variation. Of course, no tribute is complete without the horns. <laughs> 